So we finished the first Mishnah, we're starting now. The second Mishnah, which is great. Holy M dot S on the base. Base the house of the onion eating his bread itself, coincide between his shoulders. We'll stop, don't forget. We'll do we'll do another thing. We'll do, we'll do like we'll do it tomorrow. I was gonna ask you a question about that. Oh. What happens when we get up to like cough? You will see. We can do it. I can do it. I can do it in five minutes. No, we're saying. Oh, you can do it in five minutes. No, we'll do the whole thing in less than five minutes. Okay. The whole almost happened in five minutes. That's amazing. You know what? You know, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll see. That's a shame. <clears throat> Just a Saman, not to unpack the Saman. Right, right. Okay, say it. So we're starting new, a new mission here. Dr. Tess, my base. Uh, the mission says the mission wants to know when the Morning Kriyashma's time bar. The first mission discussed the base, discussed the nighttime of Kriyashma. That was our seven, right? The Cohen standing on his shoulders while he's eating dinner, the picture had three stars, and he was saying Kriyashma at the nighttime. So now here in the test, on base, we're starting the daytime of Kriyashma. So the mission starts out saying what you might think it would say, which is Me'imasai Kornes Shema Bashafras. When is the start time for St. Kriyashma in the morning? Again, the Pasuk that's mandating this is the Uva Kumecha, when it's getting up time. So what are the parameters? We said Uva Shafbacha means when people are in bed or going to bed. So Uva Kumecha means when people are getting up. So May Messiah Koran is Shema Vashafas. So the starting time is Mishiakir bin Tcheles Lavan. From when you can discern the difference between Tcheles, which is the word tcheles is important. It means wool that's been dyed with this blue dye. Like the murex trunculus, for sure. Snail. The blue, what, what is floating around in tcheles today? That's tcheles. But the point is, the word tcheles doesn't mean blue. That's my point. The word tcheles means wool dye from this chilazon juice. Okay? This, that's important. So, Mishiyakir bin tcheles lavan means when you can differentiate between blue string, blue wool, let's call it, blue dye wool, and white dye wool. And therefore, what white kind of dye wool? White wool. What, sorry, white bleach wool. Bleach? White, white wool. White, yeah, bleached. It's just not white wool. Yeah, pavash is white. Remember you do like you, when you in Shabbos, you do the lava, you need to, to, to dye it. You, you, Scavenge it and clean it. And what it? Bleach. And bleach. 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 Yeah, it's bleach. So white. Sure, it's bleach. It's bleach. Yeah. So, so it's white and blue wool. So when you can differentiate between the two, so then that that's the time when creation all begins. The Bartanura comes out and others to the Rabbah and the Parish that we're talking about the strings of your tzitzis. You have tzitzis strings, the blue threads and white threads. And we're saying when you can look, when it's enough light outside, when you look at your strings, you can pick out the blue string from the white string. Now, the question then would become, there's a Gemara that, Gemara has this on that later on, the question that would become, why that should be the parameter for getting up. It's a little strange. So that's the question. In other words, we said, we said we came to, Getting going to bed, and we said, it's, "Well, when people start going to bed, then we'll, we'll start getting up. So why should people getting up begin the kumecha when they can see blue from white threads? Like, why should that be relevant whatsoever? So perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's morning time is Kriyashma time, and and that's like roughly speaking, you know." Dawn, this is even dawn. But this, the Gemara separately understands the Menachos that when the Pasuk says, the Pasuk we say, when we create, say creation on the third parsha, that says, Uri'i Samoso, you'll see the, them, meaning the string, the blue string, who's a chars and it's called Mitzvah Hashem, you remember all the Mitzvah Hashem. So that is to, the Gemara Menachos understands that means it's a reference to Shema, and it's reminding you through the Mitzvah Shema, because what you can see the difference between the two. It's a, it's a quite, like it's, it's not intuitive, it's like quite far, it's like a crush, it's like a, it's a, it's a little 
Yeah, because if you have a candle in your house, you can see it closer. Right. I, I guess the question, I, the, some of these questions, I, I would summarize it, and when I put it this way, I think the question is the answer. It's like, you would think the time for saying creation was repeat the time people start getting up. So like, why would that be governed by anything to do with blue and white string? So maybe the answer is it isn't, and it's governed by just when it starts to get light outside, and then you have a symbol that has blue and white string. Or it's that, that they're arguing to people get up from from the moon of for argument's sake, because the roosters are crowing or whatever it is, but it's not yet time to say Kriyashma. This is a separate rule, a separate pasuk that's, that says Kriyashma time begins when you can see blue and white breads. Separate pasuk, which is like a drush up from a pasuk, right? Because it, it doesn't mention, it just says you'll see them and you're remembering the mitzvahs of Hashem, and no mention of Kriyashma there. The more of enough to understand that's a reference to Kriyashma. Either way, that's the din. The, the, is it about the, the, the din essentially, the alaka, that you can see between, you can differentiate between the white and the red. We'll see more about that in a minute. But that's, that's what the more is saying. Rabbi Eliezer disagrees, same Rabbi Eliezer disagreed in our first mission. And he says, Omar, be tcheles the karsi. When you can see the difference between tcheles, which is blue, dyed wool, and karsi. Karsi is like um, green. The cars is leek. Cars is leek. So we can differentiate between leek color or leeks or wool dyed leek color and blue dyed wool. That's obviously much more, much diff more difficult. So that exactly right. So that's we, we call it being now using Mahmir. You're saying you can't say it's a really. You have to wait till there's enough light to differentiate between blue and green. That's called leek to, to later shear. So the same for the Eliezer, who the previous Mishnah said your window is much smaller than you think. That's the whole night. Just the first third of the night, he's in Machmir also, and saying you, know, you can't see it start from so early as from blue and white. You have to wait till blue and green. Yeah. So I just remember them because to remember it's really the Mach in both places. As it happens, Rabbi Eliezer was a student of he was from Beishamai, and they tend to be more Machmir. So like, it's not surprising that it's like that, and maybe easier to remember like that also. There's a Rashi which is very strange, I have, to, I have to bring it in here. A very strange Rashi. Rashi has the word Tcheles. Look, there's only one Rashi in the, in the Mishnah. He says Tcheles, he says Yoroku, which means Pash is green. The Karov is Tseva Karsi, and it's close to the leek green <coughs> color that's called by this name in, in uh, Old French. So, I need some ironing out what that exactly means in Russian is that Yoroku. Well, for sure. The first thing that's for sure is that Yoroku seems to be quite a broad range of colors. Maybe even including blue. But certainly including yellow and orange and green. That's strange. I referenced this the other, referenced this the other day when I said that article came out. I sent it around. There's the blue part and the Yoroku part. Somehow it seems to me very strange that Chazal don't really differentiate between this range of, this range of colors. But in any case, Rashi calls it Yerok. Everyone else understands that Tcheles is something between a light blue or a sky blue to a dark blue to a purple color. They'll, so it's somewhere between like sky blue and purple, or purple emerging on red, I guess. That's purple, right? That's pretty much everyone else. But Rashi says Yerok here, which means the Pasha is greenish. So either you'll take them literally, or you'll have to... Like, forget the fact that, if you ask me, we know full well what, what it looks like today. That's a separate problem. Just kind of experiment with other people, and she does his his own, his own work. I don't know if that is a great answer to the problem. But anyways, that's, that's Rashi. By the way, in my honest assessment, honest goodness assessment, and I spent a lot of time this, a lot of time, but a good amount of time, more than most. There's, there's no, there's no way an honest person can believe that it's more likely than not. It's nothing certain in this world, but there's no, in my assessment, there's no way if you had to choose, is it more likely that the <coughs> these blue teal tchelis, murex trunculus, snail blue, is tchelis, isn't tchelis, is by me it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt, it's like a high standard. I said even meets that. It's, there's no, there's no good reason not to believe it. That's the honest truth. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's no good reason not to believe that the blue that the everyone you see the people with blue strings yes. on their tzitzis. 
then it's not the, the real deal. Yeah, it is the right one. There is this Rodziner Taylor stuff that like some yeah. of us have seen today. Like, okay, that's not it. That, and and there's no there's no reason in the world to believe that it is it. There's like zero reason to believe that. It's funny. It's, it's, it's so just why wouldn't the, touch it wrong? The Dolan say sure. I don't know. It's like a fascinating question yeah. in itself. I mean, I, I'm asked the question. Like, like we found know. it. This is awesome. Yeah, so they don't feel compelled. They don't feel compelled to know Sora. Maybe because there's a magician Akio that says that it's Nignas, and they take it seriously. That it means it's hidden away from the most of Mashiach, and so on. So, and then maybe because they're just resistant to change, or maybe. But I don't believe it's because of the expense. I asked. I think I told you this. I asked once. Of Yaku I've been wearing tailors for like almost 20 years. Really? So, yeah, oh, yeah, a long time. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you lose nothing. Before I was married, I married 16 years ago. You're only possibly gaining by wearing them, right? In other words, yeah, you can't be losing. Them. Right. You're cautious, you, besides money, you can't, you right. can't be so losing much. So you can be losing by not wearing them. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a range of, like, as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, the only thing that most you lose, and most you lose, besides for money, is the Rambam says, <coughs> the Rambam Paskins, and if you color your strings like a goofy color, like a not you know, a color different than the color of your baguette, so if you have a, so remember we're, we're thinking this white baguette and white yeah. strings, but they actually wore clothes, right? So the, so the Rob says if you're wearing you know green a green baguette, you know your green toga, and it's got sitsis, and you, and you color put on green. you'll put on red sitsis and look ridiculous. So it's not you don't have a hidder mitzvah. Hidder means mitzvah, mitzvahs look nice because you have a ridiculous color string and tie dyed string is not nice. So you keep passing the halacha, you have options. Option A, the color of your baguette, whatever color it is, green begotten, green senses, or white. So maybe you're missing that. Maybe you're, maybe, maybe you're missing that. Hidor. You could argue that, like, according to the letter of the law, it's a white garment wearing blue strings, so maybe you're missing Hidor. But to me, that, that's a ridiculous argument. Yeah. Right? But, 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 but anyways, but that, that's, as far as I know, that's the worst case. My Harusa, when I started wearing Tzitzis Tchelis, my Harusa sent a question, a good couple of lines, a couple of questions like this, to Rav, to Rav, um, to Rav Shanper, uh, not Rav Shanper, Rav, um, Khan Kanievsky, oh, sorry, and, and he asked, like, is it Tchelis, and what's the big deal, like, what do you lose anyways, like this, Rav Khan Kanievsky just answered back three words, as he's wont to do. He said, Ain bezeh mamash. This means there's nothing to this. There's nothing to this. He's rejected it out of hand. Didn't answer your questions. He just said, Ain bezeh mamash. There's nothing to this. Yeah. Well, presumably, uh, uh, presumably, I was making a presumption, that he was dismissing the possibility of being tchelis out of hand. He dismissed the possibility of? That's real tchelis out of hand. There's nothing. He's saying this is definitely, like, there's nothing to this. This is just hot air. I, I don't. That's not much of a conversation, right? So I can't say, I can't say more than that. Um, but um, putting that aside, here's it depends on what evidence you want, like what consider evidence. But he, here are the facts. Here are the facts. There's essentially this part of the world was known for raising, for having dyes. It's a famous dyeing part of the world. It was a leading part of trade in the ancient world came out of this country. It was a big deal. You see the Torah sources, you see the value of Torah sources, you see the historical sources. Dyes came from here, from some aquatic creatures. There were two major dyes that came out of this region. One was a blue dye and one was a purple dye. Okay? Um, what we call argamon, what we call, what we call tchelos. There's another color that's Tola Shani, which is like a red, which is Sonyos. And that's also showing up, showing up in uh, in our, in our mm-hmm. It was well known. They were clearly s- snail. The, 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 the snails come from a genus, of, a group of snails, a type of snails murex. Called, called murex. Okay, the species is called trunculus. Murex trunculus is the trellis snail, trellisome. There clearly were murex trunculus dye factories. Like, you know, fa- dye factories using these snails up and down the coast here, for sure. It was clear archaeological finding with mound, mounds and mountains and ditches full of these snails, snail shells. They were definitely making dyes from the material here. 
They have found ancient blue dyes in the region, not on tzitzis per se, but other things of blue dye, which is very, very uncommon in the ancient world, that has been confirmed to be from the snail that came from this region. So there were clearly blue dyes coming from this snail, coming from this region. As it happens, that the, the dye that we use here, the, the murex trunculus dye, is, is um, it's a uh, chemically indistinguishable, essentially, from, from another color, indigo, the blue juice we want to talk about. That comes from plants, not from animals. It's called kale ilan in, in Hebrew. You can tell if it came from a plant or animal by some, there's some bromine in the molecules, it doesn't matter. But essentially, the molecules are the same. The, the molecules are the same. The color, the color, dye molecule is the same from indigo plants and from Zone, you know, like a murex trunculus snails. The Gemara says that beware when you buy your trellis because there are some, you know, charlatans who are selling vegetable-based dyes, indigo dyes, kalilan dyes, and you'll think it's trellis because you can't tell the difference. But Hashem knows the difference. So that tells me that there, there was clearly that that the, the indigo plant dye and the tail is blue dye the same, they look the same. And the blue that comes out of the murex trunculus snail is chemically identical to the blue that comes out of the indigo. Indigo is well known, all the world. Yeah. So that means that you have clearly blue dye coming in large numbers out of the region at the time of Chazal that's identical to what the Gemara is describing to be indigo from clover. Now, the only possibility, if you ask me, if it's not the murex trunculus, is that there were, that's where it's coming from, that there's a third source, a third, we'll call it a whatever, a trellis fish. And there's a trellis fish that no one's heard of or seen of, but it was at the time of Chazal, it was around, and the trellis fish made this other blue dye. But if that would be true, to me, and that, the fact that you can't find factories to prove anything, but it certainly tells me that Chazal would have warned you. It would, it would have said, they would have said, watch out, you need trellis fish. And the snail stuff, forget it. It's just as bad as the indigo plant stuff. They didn't say that. They didn't say that. So, to me, it's inconceivable. It's inconceivable from, from Torah sources already that the trellis doesn't come from this, this trellis and snail. Plus, they have plain archaeological evidence that talk of, <laughs> they, were, they were making the blue dye you find it around on the snails here. My, my question always was on this topic. Where did they get it in the midbar? How did they find it in the midboard? They where? import it from Greece. They have money, they're rich. They import it. Uh, the they, they, have, they, they imported it. And they, I don't know, they, they wanted to yeah, long, long time. Yeah. And if they didn't, they didn't. If they, if they ran out, they ran out. They got more. They didn't do Brazil for 40 years. They probably could have managed that thousand yeah. for 40 years. Maybe they they closed it anywhere else. Right? But they were rich. Yeah, yeah. they closed it anywhere else. So they that's have. One. They have. But, they, but they, I don't know if they only got. Maybe yeah. only in Har Sinai did they get the mince when they were then, for all I know. So they bought it, so they, you know, they had they they rich. all these other dyes from the Mishkan, too. I don't know where they got that. Yeah, I guess they bought it from local travelers. I, I can't say. That's an interesting right. question. I don't really answer that question. But, the, but it's not our question. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the, the two parts. One was Kairos, and the other, the question of uh, the Moran. And there's a uh, question. When that happened, you know, one happened after the other that they, uh, that I shouldn't, I don't know, I shouldn't be uh, annoyed that you say that it's all much to say, tell the people, uh, Hashem Hashem Karach Machan. Right after that, right after that it says, and, and Hashem says, they can go back to Yansuf, and right after that, well, not right after, but at the end of the Pasha, it's the Pasha of Tzitzit. So he sends them back to Yansuf to, to gather up the Kilazo in order to make the Tzitzit. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. That is interesting. interesting. It's 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 that's interesting, but that's interesting. But that's is interesting, but it doesn't like okay. prove anything. I'm, right. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that the, the, there's real, there's a real, like real evidence, less like connect, hopeful connection. Like uh, that, that there was clearly blue dye coming from this region, made out of these chilas and the like the, the um, murex snails. It was widely used, widely known, very expensive, and like a big deal. Like, it wasn't like a secret. The world knew about it. Imported from here. 
and, and different people at the time wanted to control the coastline largely for this trade. There were a few things like a, like a balsam oil and the, the blue and purple dyes that were really valuable that they, they were used to be for. So it doesn't seem to be any good. And there's no evidence against. They just they say, like, who knows, or whatever. Or this is all it says. It was hidden away, and that means until forever. In any case, I can't say. But, and then why the Gadol don't wear it? I don't know what that's supposed to I don't know why or what that means, or whatever it is. I told you I did. The, for sure, the why you have do wear it. That's, that's no, right? I mean, that's, that's they're very old. But, um, but, um, Shefter, Ritz Shefter, so he is the biggest proponent of the Tchelis. He, as far as I understand, says you're better off not wearing tzitzis at all than not wearing Tchelis. That's extreme, obviously. But his thinking is, listen, if you're putting the tzitzis only for the sake of being clown on Mitzvah in the first place, and you're being Mavatz on Mitzvah, you have to put blue strings and you don't put blue strings, so you're being you Mavatz on Mitzvah, so you rather just don't mess with it and don't put the tzitzis and put the whole pagan on it and you start, don't start the problem in the first place. That's a very But it, I heard the story that a mother asked like, the child about it, and he said, if you're going to your kids not wear tchelis, I say, she doesn't wear tzitzis at all. Not like that. Okay, that's obviously extreme and heavy, and like, whatever. Obviously, the rest of the group doesn't agree with it. But that's, that's him. But the other white, I don't know, the other, the non-big block, but many or most of the white you have to do wear tchelis. Um, the, I started wearing it because the altar, the old man, Silverman, we had the Brazil, like the, the Gronix from Old City. I stopped with them, with Hans Bacher, and they all wear it. And he was convinced it was real stuff. And so, he was like a heavy person. Rav, Rav, um, Rav Scheinberg wore it Chalus. Did he really? Yes, yeah. that was a story. No, he didn't no. want to know it, though. So, yes, but I got confirmation that he wore it and didn't well, want to know it. What? Yeah, I don't mean to talk to him, but put on the off. At the end of his life, Rav, I know, not firsthand, didn't speak to Rav directly, but I know from a very reputable source who got it for him on a daily basis, and that, he's Mishamish, that Rav Dov Weinberg put it on every day at the end of his life. Although when I asked him, like 15 years ago, whatever it was, he told me, because I said it was dignity, he dismissed it. By the end of his life, he was putting it on, and very put on it every day. Um, well, you put it on and take it off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So there are people like so. So I don't know who else <laughs> has a secret. Has a secret stash. Secrecy. <laughs> so I don't know what this thing is. I'm like I can't stick my head into that. But um, uh, Rabbi Scheinberg uh, was known for wearing all the different. For a long time. Yeah, 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 all yeah. of them. Have, uh, That's what I just said. No, 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 no. I think. Uh, no, 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 no. He didn't. He. I don't know why he didn't want to know that he was wearing it. Is this controversial? Why else? I'm not sure. I can't. I can't. It's, you have to, it's not around to ask, you have to speak with her. We didn't want to know. I mean, again, any of the big dolly today wear it outwardly, at least? Well, well Schechter does. does. Yeah. He's a god. I like it. That's funny. Because it's so, you know, people define it. or Schechter? I know. But I mean, rather than the SC, you know. Herschel Schechter. Yeah. No, they, they, the, 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 as far as I know, besides what I told you, oh, for sure it's known that, that, um, Okay. The 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 rub the badats here that gives me to everybody. Result in the Chaim Goldberg. He wears it that I don't know. When I, when I went to see him, he had like a little bit of a thing. So he, he for sure wears it. So he's on the badats. He's like, but the the, the super you know five star Begolia door. Those like as far as I know, none of them are wearing it. But like, in there, it's real none of those. So, so it comes back to what we were learning the other day. This thing's in the body. Right. And if you don't... Okay, so that's it. Really so that's, yeah. But that's what they didn't. And if I don't wear it, and uh, whoever, or the client doesn't wear it, but uh, come and ask in America, they don't wear it. If, if we ask, again, you know, if we ask around the world, you know, we will probably be a little bit close. Yeah. I mean, well, why'd you, why'd you ask? Yeah. Why'd you ask? Yeah. <laughs> when I made my, made my pair, I, I, I had a pair that I the second pair I made them, I went to go see it. I went to the, you went made it yourself? I went to go see the, the guys there. This is like in the early days. I like down towards the desert in um, your hands stand, stand? What? No, they, they, went, they had the factory over there. Like, the factory was like a little place you could stand. And you could go over there and did it. He asked me to get him a pair also. 
So I got home a pair, that's the fact. Um, and I think I died, I can't remember if I tied it or not, I don't remember anymore. But, um, but he told me, the story is that his wife said, he only moved to Eretz Yisrael on a few conditions, and one of the conditions was no tchelis. Wow. So he hides behind that. That's, maybe it's just where he hides behind that. But, uh, that um, so, so I guess. So I don't even ask. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that anybody who's kind of looked into it will tell you that it's, it's not the real deal. It seems, like, it seems like nowadays we have more data to support that. Yeah, time passes. They, they're, fine, they're fine, they're yeah. fine. They've, they've found Practice. blue yeah. dye getting back, blue dyed garments getting to the time of Chazal. Not much, but they have found that, that, that are confirmed to be from the snail. Right. So it's for sure, it's for sure the, there's for sure Chilazon's, I mean, there's for sure New York's trying to was blue dyed back to Chazal's time. That's clear. That's clear. That's undeniable. And you said, like, if you wanted to buy it, you said that the is different? There is some, so I, I don't know. Yes. There was, way back when, like, 100 and well, almost 50 years ago, so there was a Rav, a Hasidic Rebbe in Poland, Chanoch um, Lehner, I think his name was. And so he is from Radzin. He decided he's going to bring the, the mitzvah. He's going to do his research, bring the mitzvah to back. And um, so he went. He ended up going in search of the trellis, and it, his search ended up taking him to um, like Greece to Naples. Eventually, mm -hmm. and, and it was the world's first aquarium over there. He spoke to the oceanographers, whatever they were, marine biologists, or they were in the end of the century. Um, in, search, in search of this, and in the end, he was convinced that it was a cuttlefish. Cuttlefish is like a first cousin of a squid and octopus. It's also a cephalopod like that. Mm -hmm. They also have this equal spit out. It's called sepia. Are they poisonous? I think they're poisonous, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. No, they're not dangerous, that's for sure. Whatever. So the cuttlefish is a funny little creature. I think it has ten tentacles. It looks, looks, looks like a baby squid. It's really different. And um, it squirts out the sepia. That's like the stink. But, so he was convinced somehow that if you do put the cuttlefish and the cuttlefish ink in a stew of other chemicals, then out comes blue dye, and it, and it did come out blue, and he was convinced that was the, the tails. Turns out basically it was hoodwinked, because the, the blue dye that he was producing was called Prussian blue. Prussian blue is like um, it's an inorgan inorganic blue dye, which was made from in the middle of the world, like Russia, until it dates back, and if you put any Organic material, I think it just has a carbon nitrogen and it's good to go. So, if you put anything, if you substitute the cuttlefish sepia for uh, frogs, right. ground them up, it would, be boiled it, up it, would all, it would also make the same. Because they think it's iron, iron based. Think it's, it's an iron based yeah. cotton. In any case, so that, he was wrong. Do they still do it? They still do it. They still do it. Yeah. They still do it and they, even after this proof, they still did it because the Rebbe did it. And that's his own story. Yeah, I'm gonna, I've got a caution on that because, like, no less or more than wearing, you know, ten foot, you know, ten inch high fur hats in the middle of summer and make sharp. If the chassidim have a chassidus has a shkafa that we stick to our traditions and like we stick to them strongly and we resist innovation, and that has its own miles and its own strongness, but it's its own story. So like that's what they did, that's what they did, and and the, and the rest of got influenced by that. And the rest of chassidim today tend to wear that together. Okay. Yeah, I'm conscious you can ask the rest of them here to defend or attack them. Um, but that's what we're going to So it could be, for all, it could be, I'm just speculating. So they sell both in the stores, what you're saying? Nah, you can't find that. We can't, I don't think you can find the Zenith Tales very easily. I don't know what they say. It must be something, they must get it from somewhere, oh. but you can't find it easily. You go to the store, you don't have to get the wrong stuff. The, now this guy, Mr. Patil Khaled, I think his name is Sturman. Sturman. He's a physicist. He wrote this book. He, he, he started Patil Khaled as his company. So Patil Tchelet, which now they have shops over, is one in the Ramah, at least one in the Ramah, maybe two. No, no, the one in the Ramah down at the bottom of Merkaz. It's its own label, Patil Tchelet, yeah. like that's the name of the shop. Yeah. They sell like old Judaic stuff, and yeah, yeah. Tchelet stuff. So they have shops all over the place, and they're the ones who sell it, and they, yeah. I'm sure he's made a good amount of the, the fortune also, on it. Also, uh, Avi Zivotowski and, and Avi Greenspan have investigated it, and they think they also affirmed it. They, yeah, and anyone who looks at this when I confirm it. You, you have to have some sort of like external agenda to not buy into it. 
uh, now, not even in a bad way, like if you are a priori committed to, Chazal just said, it, it just says it was nignas, it was hidden away. Because around the 6th century, this appeared. When the, when, the, when the Arabs took over the region here, like in the 7th century, so then like, the, the, the technique of what to do was lost. You had to, you had to know, you had to basically find this particular kind of snail, you gotta, when it's alive, you gotta poke a hole in its back, and then pull out this little like lamb on the back of it. Like, if you don't know it's there, you're never gonna find it, right? And that has to be exposed to sunlight and blah, blah, blah. So, the technique to make it was lost with the 7th century when the Arabs took over the region, and that's that. So, Chazal already said it was Nignas, it was hidden away, and all kinds of, and they, so people understand that to mean like it's a halakha, it's gone, it's not coming back, presumably, until Mashiach comes. I don't know where they get that part of it. I'm like, why well, it has to be like that's Mashiach comes. Who said that? Who, 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 I, don't, I don't know, like maybe later, I don't know. But it like, fact, sounds like we're back in Israel, in the right. sense that we have it. All the same story, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, I guess if you're a priori, like before you go looking, you say, listen, I understand Chazal says Nignas, and that implies like it's hidden away until until Hashem decides to reveal it, right. and that time hasn't come yet, presumably. If like you walk like that, then then not no, you're not being proved anything, right? The same like anyone who believes in anything is not being convinced of anything. Right? Seems like a stubborn. Yeah, that's a, that's that's the that's the well, it's not stubborn. It's a position. It's like uh, I don't know why. But if, if the Torah says you should give a bris on the day. Now six million scientists come show you how that's a terrible idea. You're like. Well, Actually, that's too bad. It's 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 I know, I'm saying it wouldn't make a difference. I'm saying, you're saying I don't care what your science says. I'm, I'm making a person eight days go jump away. Right. Right. It's like, so if you go with that attitude, then you'll say, I don't care what your science says about archaeology. They're wrong, they make mistakes. I don't know, I don't have science, to answer your question. But I'm not like science is supporting the law. Curious science is what's interesting. So, yeah, the irony is that usually, the, usually the trend is that the, like, the liberals and like, right. the innovators are tend to be like, Tend to be like not into the tradition, right? The anti and they're poo poo. Right, and but here it's a funny thing where the liberals are the innovators are wanting to bring halacha back. It's interesting. It's a strange, yeah. it's a very strange turn of events. That's why it's funny. Okay, yeah. it is what it is. Why the secular, the secular started there at Israel? I mean, they're the design, the original scientists. Right, right. So all these things, the bigger questions, I can't answer. Get to ask, ask a rub. But I, but I guess it also. The, See, in the olden days, like, meaning 15 years ago, the olden days, <laughs> of the, the olden days of Tcheles, so people told me it's, it's called Mexic Yura, which means like, it's like hubris, like who do you think you are? If yeah, Rabbi yeah. is not wearing Tcheles, who do you think you are walking on Tcheles on? So that, that was, I mean, it's even legitimate. But I think I, I'm inclined to think those days have passed. Because now, like I just told you, I, it's a short list, but there's, there's no, sh if you walk the streets, no, there's no shortage sorry. of people, it's certainly in Beit Shemesh, for sure, yeah. no shortage of people who are not wearing blue strings. Maybe, maybe Williamsburg, you wouldn't find it, and you know, and around where you, and you would find it more. Mm -hmm. So like, maybe, but in our society, where I live here in Beit Shemesh, I don't know, one in six, seven people for sure are wearing yeah. this. So you're, I can't imagine it applies anymore. I don't know. La La Fe, you should ask, ask him, your rabbi, what Do you need to ask if you want to wear it? Why, I mean, why would you have to ask? Is that kind well, of I don't think again. I don't think you have much to lose. Well, I guess you should ask if you should or shouldn't. It's mm -hmm. mind. It's, it's gonna. There is. There are always like, these unintended consequences. Like you don't. You don't think my kids like scratch their heads about it? Because I don't oh, let yeah. my kids wear it. I don't let them wear it. Oh, you oh really? No. Really? No way. Why? No, because at their school, there's zero out of you know zero out of hundred kids wearing it. That would be. That would be. Wow, that's interesting. So that's like a kind of that's a kind of problem that like, cuts both ways, right? That's like that's also a bit of a funny message. Yeah. So like, but I don't, I don't. Like, I told them when they get big enough, they can decide for themselves. They can, they can look into it. They can choose. But I said, wait for school. Not, they're not desperate to wear it. Kids want to fit in. Yeah. I said, well, I don't want to. I'm sure my kids would. Our doctor would, would be embarrassed to wear it because one wants to stand out, right? Every kid wants to. Right. Wants to fit in. But I don't force them, and I can do what do every school does. And that's I'm cool with that. Um, but uh, but I think it has its implications, right? Because that's 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 pretty all things being like in many ways that's terrible kind of it's going to affect the right the, like your basic and well that, that, that's, 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 that's another issue but it's like, emulate dollars. right it's, it's pretty it's pretty bad education for your kids don't don't do what I do what yeah, I say yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, bad. It, it, like, yeah, it's what it has ups and downs, and it, and this society does certainly box you in and labels you with like a certain. You know, is it, like, and I'm using this word not in a bad way, but is it more the more the, the more Zioni schools that, that will wear for the kids? Well, the more yes, the more the more the more, the more 
more liberal, let's call them. Like the more liberal. More liberal, as opposed to more conservative. I mean, like the, and more open to change, less open to change. But it's still like, you know, these people, you know, like, like, like kids won't wear this people. Right. You know, like, why are you wearing our people, you know? Right. So it's, like, well, they, go hand, they go hand in hand ish. Although you'll sort of see like the develop. It's just on it. Yeah. Hand in hand. Not just labels. Right, yeah. but I guess in any side labels are meaningful, yeah. right? Yeah. That's realistic to... Anyways, so that's the, that's the tale of the story. You can, I can't see any reason in the world why not to wear it. But you think it is a question for someone's rod if they... But it's a question if you have to wear it. Maybe, like, let's say you have to, because you're allowed to wear a rod, I mean, lots of stuff. I think you can actually ask, like, anything in life, you can ask your rod. This is a good topic. Oh, I'm sure you... Yeah, I'm just saying you need to ask. I think you should ask. Yeah, okay. I think you well, should so ask, and then hold your, head, hold your head up high, do what the Rav said. Really, otherwise you're sort of in the you're sort of niche that you're like neither here nor there. Like maybe you're doing the wrong thing because maybe you should be, maybe you're wrong because you shouldn't be. Like also well, the famous <laughs> cousin <laughs> puzzle that sits here, so that's what I like it. Doesn't puzzle it. So even if you're wearing the wrong blue. It doesn't puzzle it, right. Right. That's, no, that's for sure. worse off. But do you know worse off and most maybe lose that hitter that's about the wrong one, maybe. But at least you waste money, that money could have gone to some it's not cheap, right? It's expensive. What is that, 50 shekels? No, it's like 200. 200? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's, that's per string. Yeah, that's for the ride, then it's like yeah, for, for four strings. And that's a thick thing. Yeah. But you're paying, if you go like Telesos, then you're going with then you go with eight strings. Yeah. And if you have five. And then you have to buy the extra, the white ones also, because yeah. then they throw, they get rid of the white. Oh, that's a pair of scissors. Yes, yes. And if you have a bunch of kids, it's like nice. Yeah. So it's nice and shabby. They, they got to tell us God, and you know your kids. If you don't, have, and you're, I don't know if your kids have mics. My kids make the tests are come on disposable. I mean, you know, they keep on. If it gets in the wash, it's like you know they come back like pop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, it isn't not. So like you know, blah blah. blah. So it's an expensive joke if you're gonna be. Anyway, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the. But that's different than like putting you know a silver thing on the back of your towels, you know. Like, yes, exactly. Anyways, um, yeah. So it's, I'm not I'm not a right, I'm not a key rabbi. I don't have to rule. I do all my my talus and my and my tzitzis all them, They all have tails on it. When I was younger, soon before I was when I, before I was married, before I was married, where this is also like a long time, like a long, time, but a long time ago in terms of the development of tzitzis adoption, I used to wear two pairs of tzitzis. I used to wear one blue pair tucked in and one white pair tucked out. That was when I was single. Then when I was married. I will be at some point. I think I couldn't be bothered. It was too hot. I was like, shit, it's no fun. Then I, then I just went to tuck them in. And I had my tits to tuck in for like a decade or so. And then, then I, and that, that, when that persisted, I was a rabbi in London and there they wouldn't put up with this, so I had my tits tucked in. And then when I came back to Big Chemish five years ago, I was tucking my tits in because I've been doing it now for a long time. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Why yeah, am I tucking my tits in? I don't talk about this, that's how it yeah. so And then one day I was like, I might as well get my tallest when I got my tallest. So in London, I prefer to have this skin yes. to the hell is out? I can't walk with the hell, I can't walk with the hell is out in London. No? Yeah, I can't, it's not limited to over there. And I think my, my, my employer wouldn't have gone for it. They didn't want to wear black hats. They like, we didn't. Is that yeah, rich? They wanted it to get as much as That's why they wouldn't mind, that's why they wouldn't mind that. I don't know. Interesting. I think. Yeah, we talked about that. I don't remember. I think I can't remember if they wanted all the red to the top there or the I don't remember anymore. I think it was. They didn't want us to wear white shirts. You're kidding. White shirts? No. Remember they doing all white shirts on Shabbos? Yeah, yeah. They wanted white shirts on Shabbos, and I was like rebellious. And I, but even then, I mean, but I, from time to time, but I actually had a whole slew of blue shirts or anything. I didn't want that. But it, it's also like. Society, like, used to, used to, anyways, that's what, a, that's while we're on the subject of Tzitzit, what about the, the nuts? I mean, the, the, the difference. There's a whole different story, a whole different issue, which is there's like more than half a dozen different shivas and how to tie the Yeah, so there are different ways to do it. There's two issues. There's, there's three shitas that I know of, of how much, like how many strings you have to have. Either look, the Rambam shita is one out of eight. The ride of the is two out of eight. When I say eight, it's four strings folded in half, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the ride that says, well, one of the four strings should be blue and folded in half, so you have two out of eight. The Rambam says, only one out of eight. So the Rambam, if you go to Piltachelas well, and you say, I want the Rambam Shita, they'll give you three regular whites, 
per corner, yeah. and the fourth one will be half blue and half white on the string. That's the wrong one. So you only get one out of eight. And, uh, and then Tosos and, and Rashi understand two out of four, four out of eight. So that's a different way right? so that's, that's one issue. And then on top of that, there's like how to go about tying it. Right. There's, because the Gemara is very, the Gemara is pure, look, they're not, not clear, and it's pretty, it's like pretty like chilled out. Because like, I'll kind of say, well, at least have this, at least have so many of them, most have so many, and like these seats have sort of options. And different people understand different ways. So, Sometimes you look at their knotted area, and there's a lot of blue, or there's a little bit of blue. Right, yeah. right. so yeah. it's different, different shitas. My tenses happen to be like the Gurad shita, so that the Gurad shita is the, uh, um, 39 total loops, each of groups of three, and that means you have 13 groups of three, the 39, and they alternate white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, so you have seven whites, six blues, and then it's divided up like a. Sure, it's. What's that? What's that? Because you have the knots between the fully up and the loops, so it's like knots, then white, blue, white, blue, 12, three white, three. Then knots, then white, blue, white, blue, then knots, white, blue, white, blue. So that makes a total of 12, 4, 4, 4. And then the last section, you have just three whites. And then final knots. You have four knots. Uh, five, sorry, five sets of knots, four sets of chuliot. The first three are 12, each comprised of two blues and two whites. And then the fourth, just a white. That's the Grashita. Rav Schechter, he. Uh, he Hoskins that Ashkenazi Jews go to Tosfos in general, and therefore we should do Tosfos, which is a different kind of time. Right. I didn't have the garage, that's how I started. I came by minute and I said, you know, that's why I stuck to it. No, no, that's not, like, why should I change now? I stick to it. Like, when they go and ask me, how do you want to do it? It's time, I'm like, I don't time myself anymore, it takes too long. So I just say the garage, and they say, oh, garage, that's been an extra five seconds of time, because it's been an extra time. <laughs> but I uh, like that. But that's how I started, that's why I stuck to it. Came by minute, so it's good. Anyways, that's the story. So I don't know, I think you should ask about what they should do. The question should be, what should I do? Not, not is this trellis, whatever. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple, simple question is, should I wear trellis, yes or no? That's the question. And whatever the Rav says, so then you do what your Rav says. That's what you should do. That's what you should do. And I um, expect you to see you all trellis tomorrow. <laughs> there's a very funny, there's a guy, there's a Rav Schlossberg, he's like an 80 year old person who sits in his chair here, and he's nice here, and he was like quite, a, it's funny, he was like quite against it, like, not, not against, he was quite, you know, he's an old man, and he was not into it, and then somehow I gave a sheer on it, I think we learned Menachos, we learned Mishnahis and Menachos, then he went to some day long seminar, and the next thing you know, he was getting it for his, oh, so. that's an old dog, but anyways, so that's the story. Same, so, good. So, <laughs> back to the Mishnah. So, and, and Rashi, she does a, a, a problem all the time. What's with your rock? Okay. Um, so, now, Rabbi Eliezer said, no, it's from Ben Trilas the Karsi. You have to tell there between blue and green wool strings. Ad Neitzacham. According to Rabbi Eliezer, the deadline strikes at Neitzacham. So the window for Kriyashma is very narrow from, uh, from when you can tell there's in green and blue, just to Nate Zahama. So it's, I don't know, so 30 you're minutes. You're minutes. Slap, you're yeah. you're so now, I'll get, so now the next, I'll call that off once I'm coming back to it. The uh, Rabbi Yeshua on there, Ad Shalosh Shalos. He says, no, you have till three hours of the day. We discuss the math three hours, maybe tomorrow, whatever it is. But he says, you have three hours of the day. Shekhen Derech Malachim, it's the way of aristocracy, you know, kings, princes, lamot b'shalashos, to get up at the third hour of the day. And therefore, since, since we said it's societally governed, and since we're saying there's a significance, there's a section of, of society called Malachim that are worth, you know, that are they're not crazy being up to the third hour, it's normal for them. That becomes a normal part of Jewish, of the halacha. And the Jews can all consider themselves like B'nai Malachim or run themselves out of B'nai Malachim. The Lady of Medici, of course, I do with this, with this that, you know, we all are, you know, princes. Um, and therefore, you can rely until the third hour. Okay, that's from Yeshua, and that's the halacha. The math I'll go over in a second. But it's like the, that's the makhluk, it's just the words for us. Rabbi Lezer says you have it till eight, sun over the horizon. Yeshua says you have it till the end of the third hour, which is the halacha. 
in details in a second. Now, first of all, the Rajva asks the question, is, wait a second, if, you, if the coins are really yes, or you have until the Nitzah Zama, but every, the kings are getting up, you know, at 9 a.m., whatever, whatever, so when are they going to say Kriyashma? They'll never be guilty. So he answers that Rabbi Eliezer, and everyone says this essentially, Rabbi Eliezer only means this is the proper way or the ideal way to do it, but you're still Yotzi in a lesser way or the other way until the third hour. Okay? That's number one. As far as Yeshua, the Bible seems to imply, we'll see it eventually, that um, it's Lachachila all the way to the third hour. There's no real mile of saying it before nights, you can say it after nights also, which is fine. The Yushalmi says no, the Yushalmi seems to imply that he holds that's also Vidyevi. As the Yushalmi seems to understand that the Yeshua agrees that by makes is ideal. After that, Vidyevi, but you're still Yotzi Kriyashma until the third hour of the day. Okay? By the way, we've seen that before. We've seen, here's a bonus question. We've seen already in the Sabbath Brothos this Shita of Rabbi Yeshua. I don't remember where it is, where it says, because kings get up the third hour of the day. It's Dov with David. That's right, David on Dov, what Dov do you see? Dov Dalet, that's right, it actually, um, yes, uh, it actually is not Gimel on the base, but you're, you're right, is that, that's so good. On Gimel on the base, where we had that calculation, where we tried to just reconcile Dov getting up on Chatzos, and getting up on Shmurot early, and then we said, oh, there are two explanations. One explanation was Ashmurot. The answer, we had a machlokas between Rebbe and Reb Nassim, if it's three or four, and Rebbe said four, Reb Nassim said three, Rebbe would say to Reb Nassim, well, if it's three, how can Dov get up a chatzot? He's still getting up Ashmurot before the other kings. So the answer was, well, Ashmurot, I hold that each Ashmurot is a third of the night, so each one's four hours long. So he gets up at midnight, that's six hours before dawn, and the last two he got up before, because I hold, says Reb Nassim, like Rebbe Yoshua, Rebbe and our Mishnah, that kings get up in the third hour of the day, and I was talking about that, so we didn't see it before. <laughs> in terms of... How do we hold the third hour? Right? We have third hour. Yeah, people have treated it as the third, the third hour. Third. So you have the end of the third hour, and so it's one finish month. Now, how do you calculate that is a bit of a... Is a not a bit of, it's like a mega monster of locus, between the Maganav and the Magra, the gist of it, the locus, there's a lot of things on it. The gist of it is like this. We talk about hours of the day. We're not talking about what are called shows, um, shavios. We're not talking about fixed 60 minute hours. We're talking about twelfths of the day, of the, the daytime hours. Right? So I, when I gave the first mission over and we'll stick to it for the rest of our adventures through Shas, we'll assume that, that the day begins at 6 a.m. and ends at 6 p.m. That keeps things simple. Right? Like on the equinox. So then, but, but, um, but it's not so simple because a, it's what are called shaos zmanios, um, seasonal hours, it's called them. So they change. In, this, in, in Jerusalem, I don't know the rest of the world, I don't know. But in Jerusalem, I think roughly speaking, in the summertime, one hour ends up being around 70 minutes, one shas, a halakhic hour, and in the wintertime, it's around 50 minutes. Because yeah, the day is like 14 hours long in the summer, and 10 hours, daylight hours. There's a separate mega machlok, as I told you, between the Maganova and the Gra, which is like, day, what is the daylight hour? Do we mean from sunrise to sunset? Or do we mean from Amr Shachar, like first light, to the taste of the which is like the end of, you know. And the Maganova holds, it's um, from Amr Shachar to the to, uh, taste of the And that being the case, his, his day starts for like more than an hour before the Gra's day starts. And therefore, his ending time ends, like his last, last chance, but Magnoram is sooner than the Gra. That's what we see in every law. We'll see when is the Sosan and Kriyashma. We'll say Magnoram says 8.30, and Gra says 9 o'clock. We'll see that consistently. Right? So it's not that number, but like, it's something like that. Because they're, he's, he, like, start the day 72 minutes or the number is early, and that pushes for quantum time. But why are you laughing so much? You got an answer from our number one list already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's a one word. Well, good. So, um, can, can. You say should, should I, can I wear a less money? I told you don't say should. I said I said and should I. I said should I? Yeah, because you know I was expecting to say why do you want to? 
Well, well you became a leader of the world by asking, can I? Well, I've asked all those enough questions to know. <laughs> Anyways, of course they can. I mean, I, I whatever. No, no, you would say I shouldn't. So, Pim, or, I'm, 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 I'm curious. Pim, I say, should I? Then, see what I mean. You want to say, should I? No, I'm saying because. I said, should I? Oh. Yeah. I said, should I slash can I? Right, so he's wiggled out of it. Should I slash they? Really? Should I is very specific. Should I? He's left with two options. Yes, you should or no, you shouldn't. Well, I said, but, but can I? So he said, yeah, you can. Because that, he's, anyway, say um, well, it. So that's it. So, so I don't do the math, but that's the story between the Shavis 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 Manios variable. And the clock is grow or not, we're not going to resolve any time soon. That persists throughout all the time. And the other thing is you have three hours in a day. According to the, according to the Yerushalmi and many others in conspiracy, a chachila you should say Krishna before names. Many like that. Before names. Before names. Yeah, so you, yeah, many like that. And then you say, why did you still sleep? No, yeah, that's it. And then Dominic, we will dominate names. We just say, why did you still sleep? Then many are, many are mocked for that. For, for good reason. That's what we'll dominate, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that, 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 we, yes, that, and also because there's a several Shabbos. classes, it says, Yeruch Yim HaShemesh, we'll see, you know, it's a big deal to dominate. To dominate at sunrise, Shemun Ashram. So, right. That's, that's why it's here, here that very mildly we start, like, This is the room, this, this, this is the, the second, second room, yeah. yeah. This is the point. This, they also hold here a different time than, like, Mas Florica, right? Yes. There's two Nates, there's two right. basic sheets is what Nates is. Right. There's the astronomical Nates, meaning, like, when the sun is over the horizon, theoretically, which will make Sandira, which is when you can actually see the sun rising on the see the sun coming over the horizon. Right. Most shitas are and remote and remote is that is it should go make Sandira, which is when the sun is seen, which is a little later on. Because uh -huh. it's hills, there's hills which still like the sun is pushing. And uh, that's this many here was Nate Sandira, so it's and you know it's later. It's it's fifteen later. minutes later ish ish. And, we call this the later nates. The later nates, exactly. So, okay, very good. <laughs>